the Shiki Science Show clips. Exactly. And I mean, as you mentioned earlier, one of the reasons that um, you created the fasting mimicking diet is to kind of um, avoid some of the more deleterious effects of doing water only fasting, which could lead to malnourishment. And one thing that I find quite interesting, and you had a, a paper I think came out in 2019, which is how fasting can influence the gut microbiome. And obviously the gut microbiome feeds off like fiber that we consume in our diets. And so um, sometimes in my head, the thought of doing a water only fasting makes me think, oh, what's going on with my the gut microbiome? Have they got no food? And so obviously you showed in that study, I believe it was looking at how FMD could alleviate symptoms of inflammatory bowel syndrome. And so I was just wondering, like, to what extent do you think some of the benefits of FMD are being mediated by the gut microbiome and what part do you think they play in the whole process? Yeah, so um, the original idea, because Walford was, um, and, and lots of people that I work with were always fans of either vegan diets or pescatarian diet and these longevity areas around the world, you know, the Okinawa. So I, I thought from the very beginning, I want to melt I don't want to do a fasting mimicking diet with any ingredient. I want to do a fasting mimicking diet, mimicking diet with the ingredients that the longest lived people in the world eat all the time. And, and you know, you could have argued with me and say, that makes no sense because you're just giving it to them for five days once in a while. Why do you do, do it with the uh, use meat, use red meat, use, uh, um, use lard, right? Uh, use animal products. Yeah. But I thought, no, I want to, I, I think we eventually we're going to see benefits from using the right ingredients. And, uh, you know, that paper was one of the first ones showing that water only fasting actually made the gut more, the, of mice more leaky, right? And it makes sense, right? Because the mice, after not having food for a while, uh, they start breaking down lots of cells that they don't need as much, right? So if you have just water, you can break down the gut and the leakiness increases. And, um, but with the fasting making diet, which contains a lot of vegetable, a lot of prebiotic, um, we didn't see that, right? So there's probably enough food in the gut plus this feeding of, of this lactobacillus, bifidobacteria, et cetera, et cetera. It was probably sufficient that we saw this big expansion, these protective uh, microbes. And, um, and we don't know, but I mean, there's lots of papers that are not ours suggesting that Yes, if you go from whatever, 15% to 60% protective uh, bacteria species, then uh, you, you can be expected to have benefits for inflammatory bowel disease or general inflammation of the gut. So now we have you know, a number of clinical trials that, that are looking at exactly that. Uh, Stanford is actually now taking the lead in, in doing the, uh, the study. So we'll see what happens. But, um, but now we're sort of combining this idea of the fasting with the idea of feeding the microbes, right? So fasting while feeding, um, and, uh, and I think that that's very important. And also the, the post-fasting feeding is important. So what would fed during the fast, but it was also fed after the fast that is probably driving you know, the, the microbes one way or another. So if you eat a steak, um, this could be killing a lot of the effects of the, the five days of the, of the vegan diet, right? So, um, yeah, so that's why we, we also think that at least 24 hours past the FMD should be lots of vegetables, maybe a little bit of fish, um, and that's it. You know? and, and make like cereals, a little bit of fish and lots of vegetables. 